right, my name's Diane. You're currently watching the Just Kidding Around show. Thank you so much for joining us. This week we are making masks and we have invited an artist from our community, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hello, Diane. And Susan's here with us and we are going to do some mask making. Thanks for having me today. Well, we're thrilled to have you. You're very, very talented and I enjoy the artwork that you do with the students and I'm thrilled that you could be here on... Uh, Thurston Community Television. Thank you. So before we get started though, um, I like to look in the camera and say hello to special people. And I want to start by saying hi to all the students at South Bay. And hi Mr. Feeney. Is there anybody you want to say hello I'd to? I'd like to say hello to all the students as well. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for coming. And um, as you can see, when we open the credits, we're on a mask. Do you want to tell us anything about that mask? Well, this is a plastic form, and to make the mask, you put cooking spray on it, and then you put saran wrap over the top, and then you use art paste mixed with water to put over the form. Okay. Now, didn't you do this project with 30 students at a time? Yes. And in all, how many students did you make? Seven different classes. Oh my goodness, so seven times 30. So, you, so you've done about 250 of these. Yes. So did you have, how many of these forms did, did you have? Well, we had 30 forms, and then some of the students used these as masks. Okay, so you can also do this with the paper plate. Yes, I did half of the classes with the forms and half okay. with the plates. And is it hard to find one of these forms? No, it's not hard. What kind of a store would a person go to? A fabric store or a craft store. Oh, a fabric store would have something like this. Okay, and are, are they very expensive? No, they're not. All right, so if a family wanted to make a, a group a mass, they could just use one, right? Yes, you let it dry overnight, then you do a second layer, and then you're done. Okay, and then another family could use it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is quite interesting. So I'm going to put that down. And you said that we can also use a paper plate. Yes. Yes, sir. OK. And how would it work if we just used a paper plate? Well, as you moisten the paper, mm -hmm. then you put it on the form. And then when it's, you have it all covered, you bend it in half. Would we get the same degree of definition for the face? No, you would not get the same definition. You would get it like this, and then you would decorate this. Okay, so the 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 show opened on which mask was it? One of these. See? One of those back mm -hmm. there, and mm -hmm. all these back here. Did they use? Did they use the paper plate, or did they use the form? All use the form except the one on the right. Okay, all right. So, well, can we make a mask right now? That would be great. So you tear it in small pieces. Tear it. So this, this. is uh, this brown, is brown paper. paper. So it's just a brown paper bag. Mm -hmm. Nothing simple. So far we haven't spent much money. And you can kind of move it around like that, dip right. it in. Is there something else you can use besides the paper bag, or is that the only thing we could use? You could use brown paper towels on But it has this. to be brown? It wouldn't have to be. It's your choice as an artist what you get to use. Okay. So paper towel or a paper bag, mm -hmm. and what what are we dipping? This is weird looking stuff. This feels sort of like Jello, and it's art paste. Oh, it comes I've in a powder, and you mix it with water. We've done this show for years, and nobody's ever had anything like that on. Oh, so it's like a clear paste. Ooh, okay. So we'll put it on here, and then you overlap the pieces. Should I put mine on yours, or am I making my own? I have another one under here, so we okay. can each make one. And we put saran wrap on the mold. Yes. What would happen if we didn't have saran wrap? We could stick on there. The saran wrap, here's one I'm taking off of the saran wrap. Okay. And you see it just pulls right off. Oh, so it just comes off easier. Yes. What would happen if we put like olive oil or something on it? That's fine. And that would be okay too. Any cooking oil is fine. It just okay. sticks right on there. This is interesting stuff. When I was a kid and I did paper mache, we did um, water and flour. I've done that many years ago. So this sort of replaces yes. that. But this is clear. Does this dry faster than that? This will take about a day to dry, and then you put a second layer over the first layer. 
Okay, so that is faster than that old um, homemade paste that we used to make. Oh, that is slick. And one more time, what do you call this, Susan? Art paste. Art paste. Is this some, a new invention? I don't, I don't know how long it's been I'm available. Just out of touch. So you overlap the pieces. Okay. And does it matter if you let that soak a while? The pieces in here. Yeah. I would say smaller, small pieces work oh, well, and you overlap okay. them. But I mean the the paste. You don't. Paste? It doesn't need to soak in there at all. Oh well, you just mix it with water and stir it up really firmly, and mm -hmm. it's almost. It just happens immediately that it's ready to go. Interesting. So it comes dry. Yes. And you did this with two hundred fifty kids. Yes. Does, do schools have this stuff? It's relatively easy to order it. Uh -huh. So it's sort of it's a very inexpensive. standard staple in schools, huh? What else would you use that stuff for besides mask making? That's the only thing I've used it for. <laughs> maybe a pinata or something, maybe? No? I don't think that would work. So it's sort of like a paper mache thing. Yes, it's, it's paper mache, and you can use it for whatever you want to do that for. And you're using much smaller pieces than I am. I'm just having a hard time tearing this. The kids love the mask. This is so much fun, and we learned about cultural celebrations. Ah. So when you do this, you have to make sure that you go all the way down to the edge and overlap it. Does it matter if you start in the center or on the edge at first? It doesn't matter. I would just keep covering the same area rather than placing it over here separate. Okay. And how many layers? You say two main layers, right? Two layers. So this dries and then we put a second layer on. These are only one layer and what happens is you'll have little spaces that aren't filled in. So you need to go through there and make a second coat to get it all firm okay. on there. And you want to have any print on the bag, if you're using a paper bag, uh, the paint, the print should be down, Face facing down. down. Yes. Because it could interfere with the paint. Right. You know what? what would happen if a person didn't tear it? What if they just cut up the paper? Does that matter? How come you have to tear it? Well, I think that it would be time consuming to it's not tearing very well. Can I, may I borrow the scissors? Would it be okay? Sure. If I, because it's not tearing. It's hard for me to tear for some reason. Have you? Did any of the kids say that? No. <laughs> well, it is for me. It's tough paper. This is a tough bag. And then what did the students do with the mask after they... After they made them? After we made the mask, they dried, and then we painted them, and the students um, put their own cultural ideas into the masks. Mm -hmm. And th this was artists express ideas through line, shape, and color. And so mm -hmm. all the student artists decided what the lines meant to them, mm -hmm. and they painted the lines how they wanted because it meant something to them, particular to their own life. Oh. Oh, okay. And then what, did, did you hang them in the hall? Yes. All 200 masks? No. No, we haven't been able to do that. So some kids just took them home? Well, after we do the painting, then the, I have um, a painting that I put on an overhead, which we look at, and the students assign a little skit based on the painting that they see. They do a skit? They do a little skit based on the painting that they see, and the mask becomes the performer. It's not the student, oh. it's the mask itself performing a skit. Wow, so that's sort of a whole, sort of a, more of a holistic type of approach to teaching art, right? And it's, it's really fun, and, and they learn about that performance and visual arts are also oh. related and that masks have been used for th in theaters, productions, and celebrations. 
That'd be wonderful if we could do a play for the school. Have they have done that? I don't. I don't know. This is uh, by table group. We do this in the art room uh, by table group, mm -hmm. and it's two to five minutes long. And they decide as a group what they're going to present. Oh, okay, so it's not real long. Yeah, we're lucky to have an art teacher at South Bay. Okay, now the eyes aren't going. Do they need to go really deep? Well, you should push that in so that you keep the form. Okay. And I'm sorry I cheated by cutting, but I, I wasn't, I don't know, just working better for me now. I'll do they have a close-up of my mask. Oops, that went away. So did the students bring in items from home to help them make the mask? Actually, we embellished them with some construction paper and feathers mm -hmm. after they were finished. They can be, you can tape this inside the mask, mm -hmm. like this when you're done, or glue them. And ah. you can use a lot of them. We had many different colors. This was done with a paper shredder. But they didn't, I mean, to make the body, they didn't have to bring anything in. You just supplied everything. We supplied everything. You didn't have to ask them to bring in paper bags. You just happened to have enough. I got enough of those. And um, since it was on a rotation, uh, there were um, different days that I had to bring the bags in. Uh -huh. So do you think that this is a fairly easy pro project for a teacher to, to do with 30 kids? if we have teachers watching? Well, I think it's very worthwhile to bring in ideas about the commonalities, the fact that there are a lot of commonalities among cultures, and to bring that in and have students talk about that and to look at different masks from around the world. So each culture has their own, well, there, their own masks? Well, there's different masks, but uh, there are a lot of things in common as well. Do some cultures not have masks at all? Well, I, I couldn't say that they all have masks, but a lot do, and they're well, used, used course, in many celebrations. Of course, I think Mardi, Mardi Gras, you know, so that would be the French. But I could see people using this for a reader's theater or for, you know, actually making masks for reading, too. Yes. You know, to do, to do a play or, um, so, you know, I wonder if we could move on. Instead of finishing this, I think they have the idea of what we're doing. Yes. Okay, so, and we haven't finished yet, but we will finish. And this is the first layer. Is that right? So it's going to dry. We're going to finish the first layer, and then this will dry. And then tomorrow we would do a second layer, yes, right? Yes, this is ready for the second layer okay, already. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. And how, how long does it take to dry? 24 hours. So pretty much exactly 24 hours. Does it matter? I kind of got carried away with the art paste, but. That's, that's fine. Okay. As long as it's flat, then it'll dry flat. Mm. You know, I think this would be a neat um, substance to use for um, making uh, Cinco de Mayo, you know, for making uh, pinatas and different things. OK, I'm going to. Leave this here in case the cameraman want to get a pic. Oh, thank you. Jim's got a picture of my mask. That reminds me of something the French would have, you know, worn back in court. You know how it wouldn't be totally. I don't know. <laughs> just reminds me of it. I'm not saying it's exactly. So then, so, and then after we do the second, is that what we're going to do? Should I get rid of these now? After, after you have the second coat done, that okay. would need 24 hours to dry, and you can use tempera paint with school children. What if they were going to do this for an adult play? You could use tempera paint or acrylic paint. All right. And so are we going to paint the, are these actually finished ones right here? These are. Even though they could use a second coat, we could go ahead and work on these. Okay. So we would trim them off. Oh, trim off the edges. Trim off so the edges. Even. So people don't necessarily wear these. No, because there's we haven't left the eyes open or anything. So this is more as a decorative mask to put your own cultural expression into it 
or the ideas that you have that are unique to yourself. Okay. So now if we did want to make a mask that had ho hollowed out eyes, would we? Would that be during this stage when we're putting this on? We just wouldn't put anything there? Or would it be better to go ahead and um, lay the paper down and cut the eyes out later? I wouldn't put it there if the, their eyes are open there. You can just work around that area. Okay, okay. It makes it a little so easier. Because I, I could see some people wanting to leave uh, the eye space open, but I understand why these are nice too with the eyes painted. We have some interesting things here to embellish with, too. I just found these in the hall tonight. So you could use that. You could yeah. use anything on your mask because your mask is your ideas, and you should put whatever you want on your mask. So they could look around the house. And are we going to embellish first or paint first? I would paint first and then embellish things. Okay. This is so interesting. This is what they use for packing material now instead of that styrofoam. I thought that'd be good on my mask. And what kind of paint? This is the acrylic. This is acrylic, but I would use tempera because this will stain clothing, whereas tempera will not. There you go. That's a good reason. Or at least it hasn't stained mine yet, but it okay. possibly could. I can't guarantee that it won't. But, but acrylic has that kind of shine to it that I like. And it's thick enough. And it's thicker. Yeah. Now, are these acrylic or are these? Tempera? These are tempera. All right. This would be. Oh, good picture. I don't know whose camera's on. That was done with tempera. And that was done by, how old was the student that did that? Nine to ten years old. Okay. I hope they get them home okay. We'll make sure they get yeah. home. Yeah. I mean, well, you know how kids throw things in backpacks. I could They're pretty something. proud of their work, so I'm sure they'll take care good, of it. Good, good. So if you want to make the orange, you just add a little tiny bit of red. Oh, so this is a real artist palette, huh? It is. Oh, oh look at you. Ooh. Am I supposed to be making orange too? Sure. sure. You might want to add more, a lot more yellow. Okay. So then you work around and think about something that's really important to you in your life and express yourself with your own ideas on your mask through line and shape so, and color. Okay. Um, Flowers are important to me, and trees. So how would I express that on a mask? So I also enjoy flowers and gardening. Okay. So I could create a garden fence around the edge of the mask. Oh, okay. So I could draw spinach on here if I like If spinach. you want to draw spinach, you can. So I'm going to draw spinach on my mask. Okay. Well, I shouldn't have used orange. I'd rather have green. Do you have any green? Oh, I do have some blue. You can make green. Green's really, yeah, I'll make green. Should we tell them about how your daughter <laughs> borrowed some of your paints? And so we're... Um, it's a limited palette her. tonight. Oh, how beautiful. So I'm going to make green by yellow. I've already got orange on here. <laughs> well, let's see if... <laughs> Uh-oh. I think I did it the wrong way. Okay, so when you change colors, you wash out the brush. Oh, I skipped that step. Okay, so you can well, wash it out if you want to change colors. Yeah, I already, I'm going to put this here and save that there. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I want green. Green is so important to me. Okay, so let's start with yellow. Okay, let me do this. Take right yellow, a tiny bit of blue. Tiny bit of blue. Okay. So I've got a little bit of orange on there, and I'm going to have a little bit of green on there. Okay. That bright green is really going to show up on this brown mask. Oh, so are those flowers you're doing? What is oh, hence, some, you I'm said. going to go around here. Okay. And as you work, you can turn the mask, which will make it easier to work around the contour. Okay, so you don't contour. color the whole thing one color at first. Well, I like... Chlorophyll. I've been eating more chlorophyll lately. So that's my green. And this is important to me. And you're putting a fence on yours because you like gardening? I think that's going to be fun. Okay. Get this curved line all the way around. I'll give myself some green eyebrows. 
So what I ask the students is what the lines mean to them, and they explain their story then. Oh, and so the, did they all have a story to tell you about why they use the colors they use? They, they do have a story, and I have them share their stories with each other also. All right, just in small groups. Yes. Not, okay. Okay, now I want to switch colors. I don't understand why I didn't color the whole mask one color at first. Well, that'd be up to you. It's so totally, I could have done it's that. It's totally your idea. Whatever so your I idea could make is. the whole mask green if I you want. You could. And then when it dries, you can paint over it, giving other little designs to it. Oh. Because that's what my, I want to do. I want to take a big you know, brush and go over it. Now, what did, do you know the story on this one? Why? Do you remember why? what these colors meant to the student? This particular one? No, I don't remember this Do you remember one. Some of them but though? this is asymmetrical. If you notice the sides are different. Okay. So it's asymmetrical. Some of them chose symmetrical designs. Oh. So if the sides are the same, they're symmetrical. And so you taught symmetry with this too. It was their choice on how to whether or not to make it oh, sy symmetrical so cool. or asymmetrical. So that's that's asymmetrical because the design's different. Yes on each side. Okay, they got it, okay, all right, okay. So I can't think of why I would use these other colors. I can just, can you help me think? Well. <laughs> what would I do with the red? You can make more orange to, plant, to put some flowers on there. You can make, you can make uh, stippling, little dots. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put a lot of blue on mine because I don't have a lot of color up here yet with just the curved lines that I made. So I'll make a large curved line, a big shape. This would be a fun thing to do on a weekend for a weekend project at home. We could start on Saturday and finish it on Sunday. That means we have three minutes. So we got to get everything in. I want to know how I can fit these in. Oh, my ears? Could they be my ears? You can <gasps> tape those on. You know what I'd like to do before we get off the air? Can these be my earrings? Absolutely. I want earrings. And how would I get that on? You could glue it on with white glue. And since we have this tape right here, you could use that. OK, why don't I do that? I don't have pierced ears, actually, but I love earrings. So here's your tape. Thank you, Susan. The kids use white glue pretty much though, right? Yes. Oh, there's mine. And I like spinach, that's why I have the green. And I like flowers, that's why I put the red cheek there. And I like earrings, that's why I put the packing stuff there. So should you talk about yours? Well, I like gardening, so that's why I put the small curved lines around here because I was going to create the, the camera. I was going to create the garden fence all the way around, oh, okay. and I could still add to that. And I really like going to the ocean, so I used oh, a lot of blue that's on the ocean. top. Ocean! I thought that was the sky. Mm -hmm. cool. I would just keep bringing it on down. Okay, and so these kids, it's possible maybe the yellow is because they like sun. Exactly. All right. I like her dots on her cheeks. I think that's cute. And sometimes they put information about their pets on their masks, too. Oh, really? Yes, how would, they do. How would that work? I have a guinea pig and some fish. How would I put that on the mask? Well, you could use the colors of the fish or the guinea pig. Oh. Or you could use the shape of the fish on there. Okay. Okay. Well, right now, we only have one more minute, so I'm going to try and finish the other cheek. I'm going to take her earring off. Put this on. Now, how old were you when you first started... Uh, making masks. Or not how old were you, but were you an adult? Or? I was an adult. So you didn't make masks as a kid? I don't recall doing that then. It would have been a lot of fun though. I bet the kids loved it. And this uh, teaches also, this, it's something flat is two-dimensional, whereas now we have a three-dimensional ah, form. So you've taught symmetry, color, culture, and what was the last thing you said? Oh, dimension. And then we yeah. have the art elements of line and shape. Oh yeah, I want to get a mouth on there. How come they don't have very many? They don't put the mouths on very much. Uh-oh, they're going to mess it up. Well, I want to thank you so much 
for coming, Susan. Well, thank you very much for this having me here. This has been fun, and thank you for sharing this idea. This is something people could do at home. If they didn't have the art paste, could they still do a flour and water paste? Maybe? They might be able to just try white glue and a little bit of water. Oh, okay. But white a glue. lot more white glue than water. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, and um, thanks to Jerry, Julian for running a camera, and to Jim Elder. Thanks, guys. In the control room, we have Steve Elder doing sound and Tom Dubuque, who directed the show. Thanks. Bye, students at South Bay, and bye, bye. Mr. Feeney. Thanks again. Okay, so, but then how do you feel in every second?